Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Purdue University. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Megan from Purdue University. It's good to see all of you today. I don't know that I'm sharing the right screen. I'll go ahead and get started. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. It looks good. Okay, perfect. Um, so a little bit about Purdue. We're a large public university in West Lafayette, Indiana. Um, we are a large, like I said, public university with about 35,000 total undergraduate students. Uh, our students hail from all 50 states and over 120 different countries. About half of our students are from Indiana, though, as we're a public institution in the state. About 35% from states outside of Indiana, and then the rest is our international student population. So we are a college town. We're about an hour north of Indianapolis and about two and a half hours south of Chicago, but all of the amenities that you would expect from kind of your home away from home. Um, miles of biking and hiking trails, restaurants, movie theater, shopping centers, you can see here, festivals and farmers markets. So a lot of activities for students once you are on campus. We want our students to have uh, lots of academic opportunities. So an example uh, from the photo that you're seeing here, this. Uh, Second from the left is Charlotte Tuttle. Charlotte was one of the first students to go through our degree, plus, uh, degree in three program, which is where students um, can finish their degree program in three years. Almost every major actually in our College of Liberal Arts allows for this. And so Charlotte uh, was not only the first in her family to go to college, but one of the first students to go through this program as a student in our Brian Lamb School of Communication. She interned for NPR. Um, she graduated from Purdue and currently works for an NPR affiliate actually still on our campus. In addition to um, academic opportunities like this, we also have things like the Honors College, of course, um, study abroad and uh, entrepreneurship certificate program, just to name a few. So a lot of ways to really add uh, to that Purdue experience. One thing that's really important to us and hopefully it's important to you is getting a job after graduation. So not only for students who are looking for jobs after graduation, but also um, internship and co-op experiences during your four years at the university. That's a, a really important piece of the Purdue experience. So our Center for Career Opportunities helps with that. We have over 35 career fairs every single year at the university, including the largest student-run career fair in the country. Our Center for Career Opportunities is also home to our pre-professional advising office. Many Purdue students do choose to go on to graduate or professional school and so the pre-professional advising office really helps students as they navigate that path and prepare for graduate and professional school. And then we have almost a thousand clubs and organizations. It's uh, one thing that our students really love to be involved. So in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna see uh, the Purdue All-American Marching Band. Fun fact, we don't have a music major, but we do have great musical opportunities, marching band, jazz band, pep band, concert band, orchestra, vocal ensembles. So uh, many ways that you can kind of pursue those musical talents if you have those, but the All-American Marching Band is probably one of the most iconic. Uh, we are about 20% Greek. So you see there a couple of students with their Greek letters, so if you have an interest in fraternity or sorority life, certainly that's an opportunity at the university. Um, we do have a go-kart race every spring called Grand Prix. And then we also have uh, the Boilermaker Special you see here on the right-hand side. Again, one of a, nearly a thousand organizations and the Reamer Club actually is what takes care of the Boilermaker Special. Another fun fact for you, Boilermaker Special, um, at last, last we knew was the largest uh, mascot in the country. So many ways that you can get involved as a student on our campus. 
we do have about a thousand, uh, we do have 11 different academic colleges and schools with over 200 majors. So many things that you can study at Purdue, um, pretty much any major that you want to study, we offer. There's one that we don't, that I sometimes get questions about and that's architecture, but any other major we study at, we you can probably study at Purdue. We're most well known for our College of Engineering, but I always say we have about 180 majors that are not engineering. So lots of opportunities. We uh, admit students directly to major at Purdue, so we do have a holistic review process. When you apply to the university, you apply directly into the major you're interested in studying, and we consider everything that you provide in your application for admission as we review that application. Application goes live on August 1st of your senior year. We encourage students to apply by November 1st to be fully considered for not only admission, but merit scholarships and our honors college if you have an interest. That November 1 early action deadline will ensure you're considered for all of those things. Students who apply by the November 1st early action deadline will hear their admission decision on January 15th. Also, just a quick note, November 1st is also the priority application deadline for computer science, nursing, professional flight and veterinary nursing. And Purdue has frozen tuition for 10 years. We're in the 10th consecutive year of a tuition freeze, but just a quick look at the total cost of attendance for students at the university. And then to wrap up, um, we are offering a few in-person campus visits this spring and hopefully even more in the summer, but we have many virtual opportunities if you are uh, looking to learn a little bit more about Purdue, including a live virtual campus tour, which is really exciting, for, uh, particularly if you're just trying to get a taste of the campus community, but I'd encourage you to check out this link to find all of our visit opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Goldsmith University of London. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Will. I am the International Officer at Goldsmith University of London. We're going to jet across the pond and talk a little bit about one of the top tier public research institutions in the UK. We were founded in 1891 and we've been part of University of London since 1904. About 10,000 students are on our campus, 6,600 of those are undergraduate. Uh, we have a very international population. We're ranked among the uh, 60 most international universities in the world. 35% of our students come from uh, over 140 countries. Uh, we have a very diverse population of students. More than half of our students are students of color. We have a very sizable LGBTQ population on campus. And about 400 Americans are on our campus at any given year. Um, so you're definitely not gonna be alone when you're over in London. We also are committing to a Green New Deal. And by 2025, we will be carbon neutral as a campus. So to that end, we have banned single-use plastics on our campus. Uh, the use of beef in all of our cafes and restaurants. We've installed solar panels and we're very proud of this initiative uh, on our campus. So London is an amazing city to study in. It's a um, you know, me me uh, huge metropolitan city uh, with about 12 million people. It's not just tea and, and biscuits and, and uh, fish and chips. There's tons of different cuisine in London. It's a magnet for immigration. Uh, our neighborhood in New Cross is Southeast London. Um, and you really can take advantage of the easy way to get into the city. Uh, we have an underground station literally on top of our campus. So you are in the city center in less than 15 minutes. Uh, our campus is a single site campus. You'll have all of your courses on that yellow dotted line campus there. Uh, we have a college green. There's a movie theater on our campus. Uh, we also have tons of uh, different restaurants, and cafes, music venues, uh, art galleries, tons of restaurants. Uh, it's really an amazing uh, spot, spot to study in, uh, and you really get a great sense for many different kinds of cultures in London. Our academics focus mostly on the fine and performing arts, humanities, social sciences. Uh, we also have computer science, law, education, um, but our 10 of our 18 departments are in the top 100 in the world. Uh, we're very well known for our communications and media. We have the largest communications and media department in the UK and the oldest in Europe. Uh, so you can definitely look into our journalism school, our film school. Uh, we also are very well known for art and design. We're number three in the UK and 14 in the world. 
We also are in the uh, number 21 in the UK for the quality and international significance of our research. And as students, you can study, uh, sorry, undertake research from your first year, and we highly encourage that among our student population. Our academic programs are, uh, it's, it's a non-exhaustive list that's listed here, uh, but you can kind of get a sense for what we offer in our three faculties of arts and humanities, professional studies, science and technology, and culture and society. The UK education system is a little bit different from what you might be used to in the US as an American student as well. So our bachelor's degrees are typically three years in length, so it's a little bit quicker to get your degree in the UK than it is in the US, um, which will in the long term save you a lot of money. Uh, since the degrees are shorter, they're much more focused and there's no general education or core curriculum requirements. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you do the opportunity to specialize very early and perform research as an undergraduate student. Um, we also do offer a post-study work visa in the UK, so you can stay in the country for up to two years after you graduate and really take advantage of all the things that London has to offer uh, or other cities in the UK as well. Um, our entry requirements are pretty simple. We require a 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply. Historically, we did require test scores, but we have gone test optional for this year and next year, so any current juniors and seniors would not have to meet test requirements. Um, we will look at test scores if you choose to submit them. The application is also quite simple. It's a direct application to a degree program. Uh, it's through UCAS, which is the University and College Application Service. And this is an aggregate application similar to the Common App for all universities in the UK. So you can apply to up to five universities. The application opens every year on September 1st, and you have till the 15th of January to apply. Uh, we do take applications after that until June 30th, um, but you might not get the program you want without applying before that 15th January deadline. It's also a very cheap application. It's only 30 US dollars to apply to five universities. So significantly cheaper than most applications in the US. Cost is always a concern when going to university. And I highly encourage you to seek out the total cost of attendance of all the institutions you look at. Ours is anywhere between 36 and 39,000 US dollars, depending on what program you study and how frugal of a student you are. You can apply for scholarships here at Goldsmiths. Uh, my apologies for the Brooklyn street noise. Um, and we also do accept federal direct and parent plus loans and any other funding you might find outside of school as well. Accommodation, our halls are located both on and off campus and we do guarantee housing for international students in the first year. For your second two years, typically students will move off campus into their apartments um, and we will guide you in the private housing process. Accommodation looks a little bit different in the UK. We do have suite style uh, living. Um, so you have your own bathroom and your own room, but you'll share a kitchen and living space with other students. Uh, lastly, we put a huge emphasis on careers and uh, your uh, internships and work placements that we offer at Goldsmiths. Every student will typically undertake at least one while they're on campus. Uh, we also do have uh, 3,000 alumni in the U.S., so you're not going to be alone once you uh, sort of come to back to the States, if that's what you choose to do, if you don't want to stay in Europe. Um, and we also do have tons of clubs and societies on campus, over 120 activities to get involved in, so something for everyone. Um, so th with that, uh, please check out our website or our social media, and feel free to email me if you have any other questions, and I'll be passing it off to the next school. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Baker University. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline, and I'm an admission counselor at Baker University. Um, I'm a Baker grad, so a, a proud Baker alum, and many are. Baker is the number one top-ranked private institution in the state of Kansas, and we're located in Baldwin City, which I think is a, a sweet spot because oh, we're in a small town, um, we're very close to Olathe, Kansas City, one hour from the airport and also Lawrence. So um, if you're wanting to get into the city, it's a, the, perfect, the perfect spot. Um, our campus has just under a thousand students um, in the, at the Baldwin City campus, which means we have an average of 13 to one student to faculty ratio. And I love that because as a student, you get to know your faculty and you get to have really strong relationships with them. Um, they'll know who you are as, as a person in and out of the classroom and, and genuinely care about how, how you are and your, your success. 
um, on campus. We have over 30 majors and minors. Um, there's something for everyone if you're looking to, to study something that we might not offer. We're also willing to make accommodations um, and, and work with you to make sure you get the, the degree that you would like. Um, with that, over 75 clubs and organizations, as well as Greek life, all of our students, 98% um, are involved in some sort of club or organization. Um, and there's something for everybody. So even if you might not know what you want to get involved in, there's definitely something for you. We are a proud member of the NAI um, and we compete um, at, a, at a high level as far as our um, sports and athletics. We have over 25 varsity sports. Um, and if you're not competing, you'll, you know, students are in the stands supporting their peers. Um, but regardless, our students are involved. It's something we pride ourselves in. Um, and I look forward to hearing, you know, what you all get involved in um, during your time at campus as well. As far as our application and what that looks like, our application is free and super easy. There's no essay required, so please don't feel like it's something um, that's daunting. Um, we are also providing a test optional route, so um, there's a couple different ways to get accepted, and one of those does not require a test score. Um, so please reach out to me or an admission counselor through the application process to make sure we're getting you accepted um, and making sure everything works out for you. We are hosting in-person visits and virtual visits. So I'd love to meet you in person on campus or on a virtual visit. Um, our campus is currently open. Our students are, are in full swing um, attending spring, spring semester. So we'd love to, to share our campus with you. Um, I'll leave my contact information in the chat. So please reach out to, to me. Um, let's get you scheduled for a campus tour. I really appreciate your time today and go Wildcats. Thank you. Next we'll be hearing from Johnson County Community College. Thank you very much, Anna. Hi guys, my name is Natalie Hayes. I am one of the recruiters at Johnson County Community College. We're actually not too far away from Baker University, so I had to point that out. Um, so again, welcome. We are so happy to have Happy with us today. Um, today I'll be uh, talking about the JCCC application, fun facts about JCCC, the campus community, uh, our career and development center, scholarships and degrees and certificates. Please feel free uh, to take a picture of the screen. This is my business card. <laughs> I do prefer email. Uh, my email is n hayes, H-A-Y-S, the number three, at jccc.edu. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I do respond very quickly. Um, so first, I do want to say that our GCC GCCC application is free. Um, after you apply, you should receive um, an acceptance email within a couple business days that will have your GCCC username, ID, and password. When you receive that, make sure you hold on to it. Uh oh. I'm sorry about that. Um, and don't delete that email. Um, so our tuition on the right hand side of my page, um, if you live in Johnson County, um, it is $94 per credit hour. Um, if you do live in the state of Kansas, but not in Johnson County, it's $112 per credit hour. Um, if you live on the Missouri side and your zip code starts in 640641, it's 138. And then out of state tuition is 223. Um, we are the second largest undergraduate institution in the state of Kansas. We have nearly over 20,000 credit students. Our number one major is Associates of Arts and Liberal Arts. Um, and then we have new, new and improved facilities, um, such as our Student Center, our Fine Arts and Design Building, our Career and Technical Education Center. Um, and then they also remodeled our library as we have a lot of resources for our students to use. I do like to show this. This is our campus map. 
Um, we do have a police station on campus. Um, also, I'm located in the SC building, the student center. So that's where counseling, financial aid, everything that a student needs is in that building. Um, also, I always get asked if we have housing on campus and we do not. Um, so if you do live close to campus, I encourage my students to live at home with their parents as long as they can so that they can save their money. Or if you know of a friend or somebody you wanna move in with, um, you can consider that as well. We do have many uh, clubs and organizations. We have athletic teams, and then we have many campus events and activities. We do have over 100 different degree and certificate options, which you can find on our website. Everything is on our website. Um, also, you can take classes on campus, online, hybrid, um, or also we do have winter session classes. So our winter break is a month long. So during that time, um, you can speak with one of our academic counselors to figure out what classes you can take take during the winter session. So due to COVID, we are currently still remote. Um, so, and I'm not sure when we're gonna go back um, to in-person classes. So we get a lot of students who have no idea what they wanna do and that is okay. Uh, we do have a career and development center. Um, they can help answer all of these questions. They can help you discover your strengths. They can help investigate in majors and careers. They can help you with your resume and cover letter and then also help you with your interview skills. So make sure you take advantage of this. This is one thing that I regret not doing. Scholarships, this is another thing I regret not doing. There is free money out there, guys. Make sure to apply for scholarships wherever you go. Our application is free. After you apply for the scholarship, you are qualified for hundreds of scholarships. Um, it's yes and no questions, no essays required. So you can go to our website, check out our scholarships, um, and who knows, you may win something. So. We do offer associate degrees, which is two years, and a certificate, which is one year. These are some of our popular programs. We do not offer bachelor's or master's, but just know most of our classes do transfer to a university. So we do get a lot of seniors right out of high school who come to GCCC because it's way cheaper than most universities. And so they get their associates and then they transfer on to a four-year university afterwards. Um, so I do encourage you um, to further your degree and get your um, bachelor's and hopefully master's. Um, we do have free parking on campus. Again, we're proud of our low tuition rates and we do have small size or small classes. So you're looking around 20 to 25 students in each of your classes. And this is the recruitment team. So Melissa, Robbie, and me, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. We do have virtual campus visits Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And you can find them on our website. Um, in the search bar, if you just type in campus visits, you will find the link um, to join us. So thank you again uh, for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Northland College. Afternoon, everyone. Hopefully I can get my PowerPoint up for you here. Can everybody see that? Yes, looks good. Great. Um, so again, my name is Ryan Cockrell. I'm the Dean of Admission and Financial Aid uh, here. Uh, and uh, welcome everyone on this Sunday afternoon. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Northland College, uh, and of course, we'll uh, we'll have time in the chat for questions uh, afterward, and uh, we'll encourage everyone to reach out to me uh, following the program if you have more specific questions. Um, Northland is a small liberal arts uh, college uh, of approximately uh, 600 students from 35 different states. Uh, located in Ashland, Wisconsin. Ashland is a community of approximately 8,500 students. Uh, as you can see from the arrow there on the Wisconsin map, we're in the far northernmost region uh, of Wisconsin. Um, to give you sort of a geographic proximity, we're about an hour from Duluth, about three and a half hours uh, from the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area, and approximately eight hours uh, from Kansas uh, City. So we're reachable by most uh, major uh, interstates. Our average class size is, is 15. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. We pride ourselves on being, on being small, close-knit, familial, 
um, you will have a very close working relationship with the faculty here. In many instances, they'll have you call them by their first name. Uh, they will occasionally even host classes uh, at their house. Uh, so that's the kind of experience uh, you'd have here. This is just kind of a nice picturesque view uh, of campus. You'll see in the background there, that's Lake Superior. Uh, that's literally within walking distance of campus. It's 10 blocks. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake uh, in North America. Uh, and we use that both for recreation purposes uh, as well as to supplement what you're doing uh, in the classroom. Um, we actually have a outdoor recreation store on campus where students can rent canoes, kayaks, whatever the case may be uh, to use anywhere in the Northwoods community. Another kind of senior uh, uh, picturesque uh, scenic view here. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, I like to share about this is um, it's not unheard of uh, to see animal life on campus. Uh, over the years, there's actually been moose sightings on campus, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, and we currently have a temporary uh, outdoor ice skating rink as well as a Nordic ski track uh, that surrounds campus. We have 40 different programs of study uh, at Northland um, with nationally recognized programs uh, focusing in the environment and sustainability. Um, one of the things I like to share is that sustainability and conservation are not just academic programs here. It's really a foundation uh, for everything that we do. Northland is part of what's called the Eco League. We're one of six schools nationwide uh, that have a very strong commitment to the environment, sustainability and conservation. And that theme uh, is incorporated to everything that we do. One of the benefits of being in the Eco League is that any student at Northland can spend one semester at any of our Eco League partner schools. And it's essentially the same cost of tuition at Northland is what you pay to attend any of those uh, other institutions. Right, quick picture here. Um, this is just more some graphic scenery uh, of what some of the classes you might take here. This is, this is literally a class for one of our outdoor education programs. Um, on some times of the year, you can actually also see the Aurora Borealis uh, from campus, which is very cool. We're NCAA uh, Division III in, in athletics. Uh, you can see the list of women's and men's programs there. Uh, some of the ones that I do like to highlight uh, are the unique ones in that we offer men's lacrosse as well as men's and women's ice hockey. We host in the far left corner there, you can see what is a winter fest. Uh, this is an annual event that we host essentially on the quad on campus. There's a number of activities and events and it's it's typically done in the, in the dead of winter to get students outside and mingle. And it's a nice break uh, during uh, the, the middle of exams and things like that. So this is a program we host. And within our recreation center, we have a rock climbing wall uh, that you can use at your leisure, uh, but we also offer courses for you to get fully certified. Regarding applications, um, you can submit either the Northland College or the common application. Uh, we accept both. We are test optional. And in fact, we've been test optional for years. So this was even pre-COVID. Um, so realize that we do not uh, necessarily require uh, the, the exam, but you are more than welcome to submit either the ACT or SAT if you think it'll benefit your chances for admission. I do like to share, we typically have a quick turnaround uh, of about uh, two to three weeks. Um, and we automatically review all applicants for scholarships simply by applying. Uh, our minimum scholarship begins uh, at uh, 18,000 a year uh, and can go up to $27,000 a year. Um, like several of my colleagues have mentioned, uh, we are also open for campus visits uh, and we urge you to come explore uh, the Northwoods. So thanks very much and good luck to everyone. Thank you. Next we'll be hearing from the University of Wyoming. Hi, my name is Harset Patrick, and I am one of the regional um, admissions representatives from the University of Wyoming. And just a couple of facts. So we are located in Laramie, Wyoming. Uh, 
we are the only four-year institution in the entire state. We're considered a medium-sized university. We have a little over 12,000 students. We do have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio that averages about 30 students per class size. We welcome students from all over, all 50 states and over 90 countries are represented on our campus. And we do try to do a really good job of having a 50-50 split of in-state students that are from the state of Wyoming, as well as students that are out of the state of Wyoming that make up our Wyoming community. UW Pride, we are division one in our athletic um, for our men and women's sports teams. We have a number of over 250 club sports as well as intramural sports. And we do have a group system for those that want to pledge a fraternity or a sorority. Um, over 300 clubs and organizations that are very active on campus and within our land and Wyoming community, as well as our student government. Our residence halls, we do have four residence halls. Um, we do have a first year live-in requirement for our students that are first year freshmen. Uh, we do have what we call freshman interest groups. Those can be based on their academic program of study or just an area of interest that they might be interested in. So for instance, we do have a freshman interest group for our students that are interested in engineering. They can be paired with another student from the College of Engineering, but we also have a freshman interest group for our first generation students. Um, that way they can be able to build community while being on campus as well. We offer over 200 different areas of study, everything from accounting to zoology. Um, our top five academic programs of study, um, our first one is going to be our College of Agriculture, which is what we were founded upon. Um, then our College of Business. We have a very competitive nursing program in our College of Health Sciences. And then, of course, our College of Engineering with our architectural engineering system is growing rapidly these last couple of years. And our largest academic college, of course, would be our um, College of Arts and Sciences that houses our foreign languages, as well as our journalism and criminal justice program. So our admissions process, we do have rolling admissions. Um, our application typically opens August the 1st. Uh, we are looking for that 3.0 on the high school um, transcript. You will see ACT score of 21 or an SAT score of 1060, but for the fall 2021 class, we are test optional. Our Board of Trustees has not made a decision yet for fall 2022, but as of right now, we do not require a test score for admission at this time. Students may apply via our university um, institution's website, or you can apply via the Common Some of our programs do have a uh, priority deadline. Those would be our direct entry for nursing and pharmacy, and that deadline would be December the 1st. There is an application fee, and again, at this time, we're just looking for transcripts. If you have test scores, you are more than welcome to send those in to us, but we are not requiring them at this time. We do offer an out-of-state um, scholarship program, so we have students, of course, fill out the FAFSA, the financial aid application. Um, our two scholarship programs are WUI and then our Brown and Gold Commitment. Those are also being looked at and reviewed for test optional. So if you don't have a test score, then we will holistically review you just based on your GPA um, for both of those programs. Visit opportunities. Um, we are offering in-person visits with social distancing guidelines in place that can be found on our UW visit website. We also, of course, offer virtual tours and then um, Zoom admissions one-on-one -on -one sessions with our admissions counselors. And this is my contact information. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and thank you for taking this afternoon's time to learn about all of our universities. Thank you. I'd just like to invite all of the reps back on to answer some Q&A questions. Um, so 
first, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And everyone can just respond in the same order they presented in. Sure. So uh, my piece of advice is probably to um, get organized in some way. I think when you're researching a wide variety of institutions, they all can kind of start to jumble together. So I like to encourage students to like figure out how you're going to organize yourself, kind of get a core group of questions that are really important to you so that you're asking the same thing of each institution. Um, otherwise, if you're not, then it gets even more jumbled. So I think uh, if you're just starting the process, that kind of organization piece uh, is really important. Um, my piece of advice probably is more for the sophomores and freshmen in the room, but uh, I'm just gonna say, uh, take the time to enjoy high school. Um, you know, I, I know we all kind of get up caught up in the college process, it's very exciting. You're, it's your first time, you know, leaving the house and um, you, you know, you get to study what you want to study, but at the same time, high school should be enjoyed and you really shouldn't like stress out too much about the college process. We are also here to help you as admissions counselors and representatives. Please reach out and talk to us, ask us questions. It shouldn't be a stressful process. I would say um, for those that don't know what you want to study, that's okay. I think all of the, the institutions on here have the resources to help figure that out with you once you're on campus. Um, I think it's great for students who, who already do know what they wanna study, but I know it's that question of, what are you studying? What are you interested in, right? And I, it's okay to not know. I say to listen to your heart, do you what you want to do. I was told to go into nursing that I would make such a great nurse, so, I was in a nursing uh, two-year accelerated BSN program and I hated it. I didn't like it. I've always wanted to be a teacher and to help students. So here I am in the recruitment field and I'm looking at getting my master's um, in counseling. So do what you want to do and listen. Yeah, I would say uh, these are all great suggestions, by the way. There is no wrong answer <laughs> to, this, to this question. Um, the other thing I encourage students to do is do your homework, you know, do as much planning and preparation and research as you can so that, you know, you can kind of whittle that big list down as quickly as possible. And I know that this is incredibly challenging now, but as safely as you can visit those finalist colleges, you know, work with the institution to find a safe way to visit. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, although again, way easier said than done now that we're in the midst of the apocalypse, but um, uh, I strongly encourage everyone to visit campus and, and check it out because as unscientific as this sounds, a lot of the, the final decision-making is gonna be what your gut tells you when you step on campus and, and the vibe that you get and the feeling that you get. And that's, that's so crucial to that final decision. Definitely piggybacking off of Ryan, please visit campus, but also be open to different opportunities. Get involved on campus. Um, think about what you like to do as a student now, whether it's academic or just socially, don't lose yourself in the college search process with thinking, oh my gosh, this school is ranked this, this way and I have to get this great, you know, go to this great business school or go to this great for College of Engineering. What do you find that brings passion and joy to you? Because you want to make sure you have a healthy balance while you are in school. Awesome. It looks like we have time for another question. So if everyone could share um, just an interesting or fun fact about your school. So I actually cheated, I guess, and I gave two already uh, during my presentation. So maybe a third is um, Purdue is the founding chapter of the Society of Black Engineers. Um, here at Goldsmiths, um, one of our uh, biggest sort of events on campus that we sort of host in conjunction with the city of London is the London International um, Film Festival and also the theater festival. Um, so students who are uh, in those programs can uh, definitely jump in on those every year when they happen. 
Baker has, it's a fun fact, but a tradition of bagpipes playing. Um, as you walk down um, for graduation, you walk through campus, you'll do that as soon as you get to campus your freshman year and then um, day of graduation. At Johnson County Community College, we've been open for over 50 years. As I previously mentioned, um, there's actually been uh, critter sightings on campus. So we've had we've had moose uh, years ago. They've actually spotted bears uh, on campus, which is unique. Uh, but sort of along that tradition uh, vein, um, the community of Ashland hosts something called Book Across the Bay. So Valentine's Day every year when Lake Superior is frozen, um, you walk eight miles across Lake Superior to a neighboring community. Uh, and then there's a huge party uh, over there at the at the end. Unfortunately, this is the pause button was hit due to COVID, but this is an annual celebration that brings both Northland students and the Ashland community together. And it's very cool. University of Wyoming, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about um, just our organization. So one of our fastest growing organizations is our fly fishing club, but it's for our ladies and it's called Fly Fishing Chicks. And so it has grown very much so. They have hats and cute little t-shirts. They just have gear. It's a really fun time. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing and thank you for joining us. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings on the same website where you registered. So thanks again, everyone. Bye.